All right, guys, welcome to the Off the Bench podcast. We got Jamie, Miss Jamie. <laughs> oh, it just took me back. Man, that was like 15 years ago. That was. <laughs> that guy did not want to butcher our last name. No, he didn't. He was just like, I'm going to avoid that at all costs. So, Mr. Frank and Miss Jamie. <laughs> That was funny. That was funny. Mm-mm. All right. So, gosh, it's it's been, what, 2009-ish, 10? Yeah, it was December 2009. So, I don't think we did anything. I don't even think we got our license till like... 10? 10. Yeah. Okay. January 2010. So, it's been 12 years. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what, what life would be like if we didn't get our insurance license? <laughs> oh, um, some days I actually do think about that. It's like, um, well, you'd probably still be a plumber. Probably. Um, and then I would have probably finished college and did something with that. Probably. Cause I talked about that when things got hard after the mortgage business. Right. Um, yeah. Be interested. It would be different, but I think we, I, I think we still had that like hustle grit grind type like mentality so it's possible that you know we've been doing something else who knows you're probably working for me with another company oh okay (laughs) you're probably right (laughs) um so can you explain how we stumbled into this business and kind of the background because it's to me it's getting it's eerie it's it's eerie the similarities of of what we went through and what's going on right now And the blessing it's been. Yeah. Well, I mean, when we first got started, we owned a mortgage company for three years. And we were in the mortgage business, I think, for four years because we were in it with another company. And then we branched off and decided to do our own branch. Um, And then, of course, the mortgage industry did what it did in 2008 into 2009. It basically crashed. And the the similarities aren't that that the market's going to crash again. The similarities are is that it's getting harder for people to get loans because rates are going up. Prices are people are being priced out of the market, right? Uh-huh. So if people are priced out of the market, those jobs seem to fall a little short, right? Because they don't need so many loan officers if we're not if we're not turning over as many loans anymore. And so that's similar to kind of how it was for us. It's not that we couldn't produce it; we just couldn't do loans because the banks wouldn't do them anymore. So right different but similar um and so we went from you know making i don't know i think i think our biggest month in the mortgage business was like forty thousand dollars which i i kind of think about that now i'm like wow i mean in comparison it's not a lot compared to what the insurance business has done for us so but back then i mean i was um in my 20s and so were you we were young and so um it was scary you know going from that to like basically going to like making like two thousand dollars a month at, the, at some at a certain points of time right. it's like what the heck and um so we were literally searching online for an opportunity where we could still work together run a business just like we were in the mortgage business and i don't know what happened i don't know if it was god a whisper in my ear but he said look up mortgage protection insurance <laughs> Like, I'm not kidding. Like, where else would I have figured that out? I never, we never had mortgage protection on our loan, right? We never, there was, we didn't do it. We knew people in the insurance business, my mom, your uncle, like we knew people that did insurance, but it wasn't this type of insurance. It was just like property casualty, things like that. So it was like, I literally just typed that in and it popped up. And then the ad that we saw was for another couple that was a couple in the business. And I was like, wait, what? And so, lo and behold, answer to ad, yada, yada, yada. Next thing you know, we're getting our insurance licenses. And But we still were trying to make the mortgage, th- like we still like had a glimmer of hope right. that that thing was going to work. Like we're, maybe we'll just get a couple more loans in and then another bank divvy, you know. Close all the doors. Out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, we basically, I mean, we were forced to find this because we could not sell loans anymore because we didn't have any banks that would do it. Right. Essentially. And I don't think that's the issue now, but the rates are so, I mean, we, we refinanced what, three months ago? No, it was longer than that. It was back, well, end of last year. Did we close the end of last year? Six, yeah. five months? It, it, yeah. The well, rates were still good. Yeah, it was like 2.5. 
Yeah, 2.5%. Now they're like... Six and a half. Knocking at six. I think they're still in the fives, but regardless, I mean, I don't, I don't know all that stuff, but they're double in six months. So anybody and everybody that's refinanced is already refinanced. Yeah. So if you're in the mortgage business, you're probably not beating down seven, eight, nine loans a month. Yeah. Probably grinding to get one or two, maybe. Mm-hmm. And more than likely, their purchases. Mm-hmm. Which... Now, listen, we ain't been in the business in a long time, but I mean, I think fees differ on refis and purchases. I would say. Especially cash out, things like that. Mm -hmm. So what do those folks do? Like, because I, I, you know, I thought the banks had all the business until we went on that first trip and the insurance company rented out an entire cruise ship. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, But it's a different, like we were making a few grand a deal doing mortgages Mm -hmm. three four five six grand right selling a mortgage Mm -hmm. with this it's a lot different because it's not the the commissions aren't as big so you need a lot more Mm -hmm. but i think once we figured it out it's 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 been a i mean obviously it's been a blessing but how many people out there do you think need help making money right now well, I mean, even outside the mortgage business, I mean, I just think about all these people who have side hustles and have, you know, who are living paycheck to paycheck, who have, you know, little side gigs here. Or I just see even people like on Facebook all the time, like looking for overnight jobs or just right. trying to make ends meet. I mean, most households now have to have dual income. Yeah. They have to have two people working. There's no more of this like, you know, wife stays home, takes care of the kids for the most part because the cost of living is so much higher and things are just more expensive. Like I even think about just like people who have normal jobs that, you know, um, they don't, they have no opportunity to make more money. Over, yeah. Yeah. Over but beyond what they already right. have. Like they can't, there's no other way to make any more than they can. There's no, no more hours in the day. Right. Like what do those people do? Especially with, I mean, gas prices are. Yeah, I Knocking mean, down. it was it, it it cost me a hundred dollars over a hundred dollars felt the car. Yeah, it's a car. Yeah, when I pull up to like the grocery store now, people are like, "Oh, how much it cost?" It's like the talking point as I how get out of the Escalade. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know. I like, just pump if you it don't and go. Yeah, don't. you don't. You, if you you don't buy a truck if you can't afford to put gas in it, right? Yeah. Like this is be the same thing with with the boat. Is like how much going to cost to fill it up? I don't know if if that was an issue, I wouldn't have bought it. Yeah, because. I mean, nobody in their right mind thinks everything's going to stay the same. I mean, and if you think about it, like how, I don't want to say smart, but from a business standpoint, it's smart. All of these companies have figured out how to raise the prices to the point where both people in the household have to work. I mean, you didn't have to have dual incomes when gas was 97 cents a gallon, when milk was a dollar ten. you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that, that stuff didn't happen, but now it is. And so people work overnight and then what just stay up all night and then go to work for their full-time job. I mean, when you get an insurance license part-time help two or three families a week and, and make just as much as you're making full-time more than likely. I mean, that's the average app is yeah, $1,200 is, is 1, is bucks is yeah. the average annual premium. So mm-hmm. it's just mind boggling to me, but I think there's a lot of fear when it comes to this. And I think you had a lot of that fear. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have fear of my work ethic. I knew I would wake up every day and go to work. Now, some days are more productive than others. Okay. But fear in like investing, right? And yeah. leads, that was a big fear. I just had a fear all around with money because we had some, lost a bunch, had bills that were over. I mean, right. you know, so there was a fear of money just in general. I don't know so much that it was a fear of investing. It was just a fear of not having enough and having three small kids. Do you think it would have helped if we went to Honduras in 2009? Like, because when I look at that and you go, I have a fear. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I don't, now it might be different. But remember back in the day when we, you know, short sailed our house and like the banks weren't taking how people were living in their houses, not paying it for 14, 16, 18 months because the bank didn't want it because it wasn't worth what they could. You know what I mean? They, they were going to lose money anyway. Um, but like, I mean, we're not going to have a knock not going to not have a roof over our head we're not going to not have food on the table like the kids aren't going to not have clothes so it's like what do we really worry what when people worry here like what are you really worried about 
Yeah. That's all I wonder. Like, what are you really worried about? Is it your lifestyle? Is it your comfortability? Or is it a fear of what? Like, what is your fear? It, the worst case scenario, like worst. Look, I'm 45 years old. Worst case scenario, I go sleep in my mom and dad's basement. If I oh, wanted geez. to start a business, I'm just saying, like, yeah. if I wanted to start something for my family and I put everything I owned into it and I grind and worked and just something happened. Like, let's just say I wanted to start, I don't know, a French fry truck. Mm -hmm. And then the government decides to shut down French fry trucks because mm. of COVID or whatever. And it fails. But it did, wasn't anything I did. I worked 24, 20 hours a day for seven days, to eight months straight. Okay, I go <laughs> sleep in my parents' basement or go call a friend, go, hey, can I crash there for, like, I just don't, it doesn't make sense to me. We don't, I mean, no, I guess people don't, a lot well, of, females are wired a little bit different. You do know that. Like, I guess females are definitely wired differently. I mean, if you look at every <laughs> statistic, one of the requirements of females, just how we're wired, is financial stability. Like, that's that's on the table. I so gotcha. we're just wired. I think just you know differently. Whereas I, you know, like I don't know if it's pride or what, but like I'm not really ever trying to live in my mom's basement. I ain't either. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like I'm not. <laughs> no, it, it's like you can't. But I know what you're saying. Like, you're not going to be homeless. Like, you know somebody you're not gonna where be homeless, you can be. And you're not going to hit it big. if you Like, if you don't swing, you can't hit a grand slam. Like, yeah. If you strike out looking, it, it's it's pointless. So, like, that's kind of how I look at this business. And any business, anything we've ever done is like, ah, okay, what's the, wor what's the absolute worst that could happen? Like, we have people in the military that the worst case scenario is they're dead. Yeah. Never Like, our worst case scenario is we swallow some pride. We did already. Like yeah. we swallowed some pride, moved into a call, Sean used to call it an apartment. Remember that? He's like, when are you going to move out of this apartment? I'm like, it's a townhouse. He's like, well, tell yourself whatever you want. It's an apartment. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. But like we had a 6,000 square foot house and moved into a thousand square foot townhouse. Like that's swallowing some pride. I mean, and it wasn't fun, but it's like, eh, I don't know. I just, I, I, I wish people would, because people want, want to be able to do things and the things we've been blessed to be able to do with our, our kids and the orphanage and in Honduras, Sandy Bay and just friends and family. And like, to me, I don't, I don't know. To me, it, it was worth all that mess. And then some could have yeah. been a lot worse. Yeah. And I think too, some people look at it like, um, like they're not here every day. Right. They weren't, they weren't like in the basement where we're making dials. Right. right. They weren't, um, in the dungeon, in the dungeon, in the, in the other townhouse in the basement, they weren't in that first office where it was like, it was only like a thousand dollars a month, but it was like dingy and grimy and gross. Right. Like they weren't in those places. They just come here and they see this beautiful place or they see like our lifestyle now. And they're like, Oh man, I, you know, it's like there was a grind and a hustle. Yeah. Like some people I think forget about like, it's like they forget about the grind and the hustle. Right. Like it, I mean, anybody who makes this kind of money, if there's a grind and a hustle, unless they are a trust fund baby. We, yeah, I, don't we're not know, I don't know any I don't of know what that is. But it's like, even if you like losing weight, like if you're fat and you want to be skinny, you don't just go to bed one night dreaming to be skinny and you wake up the next morning skinny. Mm -hmm. It's a grind, right? It's a process. If you want to learn a different language, same. I mean, it's like everything in life that you get, there's a process. And then once you go from point A to point B, people forget that journey, really from point A to, to Z, they forget all of the letters in between the steps to get there. And, and, you know, we have agents that go like, oh, man, how long am I gonna have to do this? I'm like oh, 11 straight years, 10 for sure. Like mm -hmm. 10 years. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, of nights gone, days gone, you know, people. And again, I'm not, I'm not complaining. It's like, but you want to, you want an abnormal life or an, an, an extraordinary life but you want an ordinary schedule. Mm -hmm. Like you can't go to work at seven, get off at three Monday through Friday and then have extraordinary things. I don't think, mm -mm. but that's what no. this business. And that's, I think for us, cause we had that, like, and that we got spoiled. That's why when people come here and struggle early, I like it better than when they come here and don't struggle early mm -hmm. and struggle like six months in, eight months in, 12 months in. Because when you get it easy, 
you, 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 when, when stuff happens, you don't really know how to, how to react. And for us, it was, we got it easy. Then we got punched really hard. And then we got to this and we were like, wait a minute, we got to do what? We, we, we worked Monday, seriously, in the mortgage business, we worked Monday through Thursday from 11 to 7, mm-hmm. maybe. Hour and a half, two hours, that would be lunch. Hmm. Like, seriously, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Fridays might be in for an hour or two. Yeah. Wrap up some emails. Nothing happened Friday afternoon, Saturday, Sunday in the mortgage business. Mm-mm. Nothing. And then we came here like, well, six six days a week. And if you're broke, seven. We're like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come again? Yeah. You remember that? I didn't, I, I mean, and, and it wasn't really like, I don't think that bothered me as much as, as, as the amount of work, the amount we were getting paid like per, per deal was yeah. that messed well, my head up for a minute. Well, we started 55%. So I don't even think like, oh, geez. remember, like right. no wonder we were only getting so much, so little on every right. deal. Cause our, pers- our comp was so darn low. Like no wonder we couldn't win straight away. Right. Because we weren't even given the the vehicle to be able to win straight away. Whereas here, I think people, it's almost like people come right into the shortcut, right? Yeah. Like FFL is the shortcut. It's like, here, here's the game plan, execute. But then it's like, I almost wish they had to call those same leads that I was calling that that I had. The raw data. Yeah, the raw data. Like nobody filled out a form. Calling, it was just yeah. cold calling. Sure. Or like the the lead that they said was a lead, but then they gave it to like eight other people at the very same time that we had it. Right. And we were all saying the exact same script. It wasn't like it was eight other companies. It was this company, not this company, but the company we were at. Right. We were all dialing the same stuff. It's like, I kind of wish people had to get punched in the jaw a little bit. So yeah. they kind of know like you have to build up a muscle for success. There's a muscle, success isn't just immediate. There's a muscle that has to be built up just like a muscle needs to be built up when you are working out. You don't just start doing six miles. Right. I, don't, I mean, I don't know anything about that, but. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've been told. You, you've been told. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 you'll go walk a mile and then next day you'll be like, man, I'm really sore. No, it was three and a half. Three and a half miles? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's better than one. Yeah. But even then it's like you first time you like you know if you work if you've worked out like the very first time you lift it it hurts then like the, the next day hurts and then two days hurts even worse mm-hmm. but then you just keep doing it and then eventually it doesn't hurt at all that's kind of like the point it's setting yeah like when you get told no and when you first start you're like oh my gosh they told me no right like three times they're three, like yeah oh. or if they yell at you god forbid they cuss you out oh my like god. the world's ending but then after you hear that 55 times, you're like, eh, it's the same thing. After, you, after you've after you done your arm workout 55 times, you're not ever sore. I mean, not to that extent. Uh, you know, it might every now and again, like, you know, there was days just a couple of years ago where somebody would get, I'd get somebody on the phone and they would just pluck a nerve, you know, but it was like, all right, it is what it is. Um, okay. So, and if we can do this, seriously, like, from where we were at to where we are now, mm-hmm. it's like, I think about how immature business wise we were, um, even sales wise, cause we weren't selling in the mortgage business. Mm-hmm. You know, you say what you want. We weren't selling anything. We were giving people savings. Um, I think we've come a long way and I think anybody can do it. I just think we had a desire to learn and get around people that were good. And we asked a bunch of questions and that's something that, you know, I think if people did more of, they would move a little bit faster. Yeah. I mean, you have to actually seek out the information that you want. Like we weren't good in one area. So we like, and I'm, when I'm saying seek, like you would drive all over the place up to Connecticut, down to North Carolina, to Virginia, to, yeah. to Pennsylvania. I mean, like, well, I'm not just talking about sitting here watching a podcast. Like yeah, right? I'm talking about getting around real miles, the people real hours. Yeah. That, that you don't always hear what they're saying just on a video. That's not where the goodies come from usually. I mean, that's like thought out, like we're gonna train on this today. Like getting around scenarios where people are talking to people, going through lives, like that's where we learned a lot of the stuff. And usually after, it's like, cause if this wasn't censored, like some of the stories I could tell, but I can't tell. Yeah. But if you were sitting here with me and there was no, like I would tell you, that's where you learn like, a lot of the stuff and i think that's the same thing with the kids you know i look at even tino in the communication like he's pretty good but then you look at some other kids who they can't look you in the eye 
mm-hmm. or they just want to text because they don't talk. Yeah. Like this shortcut of the podcast, they're they're great. Yeah. For in the car. <laughs> yeah. But like this, this you have to want to go chase after the knowledge, and you have to want to get around the people, not just because of what they're going to tell you, but you need to watch how they walk, how they talk, how they act, how they handle things, how they interact with people. All of that stuff is what we had to learn to become as confident as we are in this business. And I think now that we, like we could probably do any business we wanted to, Mm -hmm. but that's a big deal. And, and the resources that FFL has are huge with work spots, with the, the regional sales conferences. I mean, hall of fame, Meetings that they're doing everywhere, uh, integrity road, meetings. The, are, yeah. yeah, I mean, like RTI. Yeah, I could talk to Mark Mead the other day. He was like, "You go to the RTI meeting." I'm like, "RTI, or what is? It's a new insurance company." RTI. He's like, "No, the road to integrity." I was like, "I've never heard anybody call it that." I like, it. <laughs> yeah, leave the mark. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so many resources, but you just got to go. Yeah, and it's. I mean, people are sitting around waiting for themselves to get good at like something they don't even know how to get good at. Correct. And they're not even over, they're not doing a ton of activity. So it's, it's, do you remember the first conference we went mm-hmm. to? Like we literally counted change. Oh my gosh. That place was there. such a roach. It was. Oh my gosh. That place was so gross. But we can't, we counted change to get there. Yeah. Like s- legit mm-hmm. roll quarters. Mm-hmm. Actually back then. And, and you probably mad at that, but they had those counting machines at oh the grocery gosh. store. They took, they took like, the extra money. Yeah, I was so annoyed. <laughs> they charged now you I'm a like, fee. <laughs> oh my gosh! But I'm like, I'm I'm not rolling quarters and pennies and dimes. So I dump it in, the, and it was a hundred bucks. They would take twenty. You're like, they just took twenty bucks from us. Mm-hmm. But every penny counted at that point. Yeah. Time. And then like, do you remember like they they looked they they frowned upon like that's that I think we had just got it started and it already pissed me off. Mm-hmm. Like you know we roll coins to get, to get here. here oh yeah they and wanted us to stay yeah, in the yeah we were in the 400 night, night. Place, we could afford a 62 two dollar night hotel yeah motel like it was bad Ugh. so it's like but that's the kind of stuff that i think build character through yeah. the way yeah. right like i mean you you have to do some things that are uncomfortable period yeah. to have success this isn't a comfortable journey i think some people just want it to be so peachy keen and just so comfy and fuzzy they don't be told no they don't want any hiccups they don't want any you know nothing wrong to happen like there is a lot of adversity that's going to go into it but you can't have be you can't have the, the the peaks without the valleys right you have to go through some of those valleys in order for you to really it's like almost like vacation like how if you were always on a vacation how the heck are you ever going to enjoy a vacation correct you're never going to enjoy a vacation it's a good point i like if that. if you're always on vacation it's like you have to you got to go through some stuff you got to get uncomfortable honestly i i like when stuff's going on to me it's i like i enjoy it mm. and it's it, it's like normal's boring so if you're like if you're if you're the type of person that enjoys like just stuff like not I don't want to call it chaos but chaos organized chaos organized uh, organized unorganized chaos is chaos and that kind of gets you like this would be good for you because the unknown to me is what's exciting like I'm not big on you know obviously structure and that's why I don't have a job but this business throws so many things at you and and. The more stuff you can deal with, the better, the more you're going to make, the more problems you can solve, the more you're going to make, the more, and that's like in the home or we're problem solvers. When we're hiring and recruit, when we're recruiting, we're problem solvers. What's the problem? Well, Jamie wants to make money. I need to help her make money. It's a problem. She's got a problem of lack of money. We have a solution of how to make money, Mm -hmm. right? So the better you are at solving problems, the more money you're going to make, but it's, it, 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 Again, when we go through stuff, like all the stuff we've been through in this, like when it was going on, it might have sucked, but then you navigate through it and then you get out and you're like, wow, that was cool. Mm-hmm. You know I don't know if I mean? it was cool, but I'm like, whew, man, I feel good about that. We did that. Yeah, it was we, cool. We conquered that. Right. So anyway, all right. So mortgage brokers, anybody really like, I mean, I restaurants Any, are closing. Right. Like anybody who has a desire, I feel like... People who do good in this business, one, they, they like helping people. Like teachers do really good. 
Yeah. Right. Especially like through the summer, all these teachers are off. I'm on this like thread of these people like talking about how they only get paid. Like da, 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 pay. Everybody's like, I would never be able to live if I didn't stretch my paychecks out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, come on, let's get you an insurance license. Yeah. Cause you could just sell all summer and just be like set for the rest of the winter. They can make as much in the summer as mm -hmm. they make for the whole nine year. months out of the year. Yeah. We're really nine and a half, 10 months. Some mm -hmm. of them, most of them are only getting all two months. So yeah. Teachers, mortgage brokers, waitresses, waiters. Oh yeah. That bartender we met the other night, she was sharp. And she was rolling. She was, she was by herself. Yep. We, we were just, we barely, we were barely talk. We were just mad. We were just like, wow, look at, she's like making this and that. Da, 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 da. I'm like, Double fisted making yeah. drinks, shaking she, to it once. Yeah, making sure our cool. dinner was right and yada, yada, yada. And like, wow, she would be good at this business. And then lo and behold, she got her, her, lesson. Yeah. Yeah, her and her husband actually have a business that, so they're business minded people. So, but, um, so people like that are good. Yeah. People are driven by money, lifestyle. I mean, people that just need to make some extra money. Yeah. Like, I mean, again, if your salary is X and you're lit, most people aren't living way below X. They're mm -hmm. living right up to X. Well, they have to. Yeah, because it's not, and then yeah. ga with the gas prices, an extra, I mean, it's tripled almost. Mm -hmm. So you're an extra, you know, it's not, it's definitely doubled 100, 150%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make some extra money to put in your gas tank. I don't know. Take your kids on vacation. Take your family on vacation. Take yourself on a vacation. There's so many different things you can do. And let's not forget about all these kids who are getting out of um, college with student loan debt. I mean, right? that's a whole nother program. Yeah. I mean, I think about Sadna. She's like basically getting at, like got herself out of debt by just getting an insurance license selling it here and there. That's crazy cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how long it would have taken her otherwise. But right. most kid, most of these kids getting out of college carry this debt for a while, because yeah. the jobs aren't paying like crazy ton that right can take care of it. So no, it's like paying off another mortgage thirty years. Mm -hmm. I mean, most good universities are forty, fifty, sixty grand a year. Mm -hmm. So that's two hundred grand four years. Yeah, crazy. So all right, anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? No, I think I'm good. No. <laughs> All right, guys, please like, comment, subscribe, share the page, hit the notifications button. We are looking for some help. If you or you know anybody that likes to help people that wants to make some extra money, that's not a weak person, that's got some thick skin, some confidence, that likes to truly, genuinely serve people, tell them to reach out to us. Like, there's, it's funny. Somebody's talking about like insurance and how much of a scam it is. I'm going like, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> insurance we sell. When you die, you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no scam on that. Now, if you scam us, meaning you lie to us, they're mm -hmm. not. Then, then you're right. They don't have to pay you because you lied. Yeah. But you get approved for a policy, and you're you're only up and up and honest. And, you know, you drop dead, your family's getting paid. Mm -hmm. There's no scam here. So it's when you deliver your death when you deliver a death check, it changes everything, for sure. So. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. If you have anybody that's interested, please have them reach out. Our information is on the screen. You can call me. You can call Jamie, 443-790-9341 is my number. Jamie's is 443-790-1562. Look us up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We'll talk to you all soon. Until next week, make it a big one.